Norman Brayman, businessman. My first job out of college was a marketing research analysis analyst for a, uh, a division of Seagram Distillers. And how did you like it? Pardon me? How did you like it? Oh, that it, it, it gave me a, uh, was the beginning of, of in-depth marketing research in the United States. Um, it was a new field. Uh, the company was headed by a, a former professor from the University of Pennsylvania. And it, um, uh, prior to in-depth marketing research, people would sit in offices and uh, make decisions. In-depth marketing research people who took, took analysts outside and into the markets themselves. And I think that those years uh, in that position has played a great uh, role in my success. And how did you get into the car business? By accident. Uh, an investment uh, that I made in 1972. Uh, I came to uh, Miami with a wife and two young daughters um, uh, to retire. I had sold my interest in my companies up north and we came to Miami to retire and just as a result of an investment that I made in 1972, one thing led to another and uh, it's just continued for all these years. <laughs> what made you come out of retirement? Uh, I came out of retirement for, uh, for a number of reasons, but the major reason why I came out of retirement was I, 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 um, I misread the, uh, uh, the cost of living uh, when I here. We came from a small town in south central Pennsylvania, and uh, I thought with uh, enough funds basically to, uh, to, to take me into the, f the future. I discovered in the 1970s that that was not realistic. And I went back to work. The answer was because I had to. Oh, I think it's exciting where it's going. It's, uh, we're talking about a future of uh, self-driving cars. We're talking about a future of electric cars. We're talking about a future of hydrogen-powered uh, uh, cars and trucks. Um, um, it's an exciting time to be in the business. And how will these new developments, autonomous vehicles, uh, affect your business model? We don't know. Um, it's, it's, it's a mystery. Um, um, some analysts think it will have a, a, a game-changing effect. Um, I don't know. I'm, I, I don't really feel that way, um, especially since we've, uh, we're committed to the expansion of our businesses and we've been on a $150 million spending spree just on facilities over the last couple of years. It's still going on as we sit here today. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think it's wonderful for the automobile industry with all these events that are occurring and look forward to being part of it. The new facility that, that we built right next to the where we're sitting here today which is a 500,000 square foot facility, um, a new Audi dealership in West Palm Beach, um, new uh, Rolls dealership, new Bentley dealership, um, major uh, changes to our BM to BMW, um, building projects in, in Denver, Colorado, where we have automobile dealerships as well. The major one of the Highways that are already here that nobody is addressing, and that's our waterways. You have a north-south, uh, uh, you, have, you have Biscayne Bay, um, and uh, going further up, which could connect all north and south and connect uh, all the communities that are east of downtown Miami, Miami Beach, uh, Surfside, Key Biscayne, uh, Bell Harbor, um, um, the whole community, and other cities in the United States have done this. Cities throughout the world have done this, and we could have a, a transit system here without the huge investment in dollars that everybody's talking about. 
and it could exist here. You could build parking garages, you could have express uh, buses, um, go, to, go to Venice in Italy and ride the Vaporettos and, uh, and, it, it, and without the huge cost that entails building new roads and so forth. And I think it could be done privately as well with cooperation from government. It'll be maintained by the generosity of uh, people who live in the community. Uh, I'm a firm believer uh, that uh, any institution that does not gain the confidence and the support of the community has no reason to exist And uh, so far. Um, uh, one of the conditions that, um, that we made before we agreed to fund the entire construction of the museum was to, to guarantee to, that there would be outside financial support by the community. And that has materialized to the point where uh, this museum will be a quality museum and will offer something very special to the community. And having the free admission, having a, an active program with the schools um, is what we've aimed for and how I feel will continue. We've had marvelous help from the community, marvelous help from, uh, from Alberto Abarguin at the Knight Foundation and many, many others.